Important News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Itano Program. Cars Plus, drive home in a brand new 2021 Hyundai Palisade equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain limited warranty. Call 477-7807 or visit carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Starting now on primetime, our island could be in PCOR 3 by the end of the week. You'll hear from Governor Lulian Guerrero coming up. And Guam is one step closer to seeing more than a half billion dollars in federal COVID relief. Plus, we take you to GCC to tell you more about the first ever paramedic program for Guam. Half a day and good evening. Guam's consistently low car score and several other factors have the governor looking toward making some key decisions in the next couple of days to get Guam moving down the road to recovery. Governor Lulian Guerrero is looking at this Friday, February 19th, as the day she will declare Guam in PCOR 3. We remain in a below car score of one for the last eight weeks and that's I just want to again thank the people of Guam for making that happen. Also good, according to the governor, the island's death rates have gone down, as has the rate of transmission, and thousands of island residents have joined the vaccination. We are actually leading throughout the whole nation in terms of percentage of vaccine per 100,000 and in terms of our population percentage. Uh, and also our uh, distribution, you know, shots in the arm from giving us the supply to, to vaccinating our people. So all these things go to make a very strong, strong uh, community, less community spread, which makes me and our people much more safer in terms of recovering our island. While Friday could be the day PCOR 3 is declared, the governor hasn't decided on whether restrictions will be lifted for bars and taverns. Leon Guerrero says unlike dining establishments, bars have not been as proactive in submitting their protocols. The dining industry were the ones that brought their protocols to us and we worked it with public health. So they, they were the ones that said, here's how we're going to protect our community. I'm looking for that same kind of... Uh, uh, input from the bars. Uh, once we look at all that, public health feels through their guidelines and their expertise that uh, it would be a, a secured um, protocol to be able to open the bars. We will. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, you know, I'm waiting for their protocols. I have not seen it. Friday's PCOR 3 declaration would occur more than one month ahead of the targeted reopening of Guam to tourism on April 1st. The governor stresses, however, we shouldn't be expecting tourists from our source markets to be visiting because most countries are still cautious about traveling during the pandemic. She says what we will likely see is a change to quarantine protocols to allow returning residents and visitors to home quarantine instead of mandatory quarantine at the government facility in Tumon. Her greatest concern for now is monitoring the COVID variants and hoping we don't see a repeat of the past when restrictions were lifted. This has happened to us before. We were in PCOR 3 and then all of a sudden we had a non-compliant to self-quarantine and it just spread like wildfire. You know, we jumped from one day of 276 positives right. to close to 500 in one day. And so we don't want to do that again. When the governor does declare Guam in peak or three at the end of this week or when the island reopens to tourism in April, she's hoping everyone will continue to do their part. It's a little bit scary because, you know, we did that once, um, but we have to, you know, trust that the community will be uh, cooperative and trust that, uh, you know, um, we'll get the support of the community in terms of self uh, quarantine. 
The government of Guam stands to receive $661 million in federal assistance to continue to contain COVID. It's part of the president's $350 billion COVID relief package passed by the House over the weekend. Nestor Lacanto takes a closer look at two provisions contained in the package, which provides significant help for local taxpayers and the local government. The first one he mentioned, he said twice for emphasis. And Guam will receive a cost reimbursement of 100% of our EITC expenditures. Um, I'm going to repeat that. We're going to be receiving a reimbursement of 100% of our EITC expenditures. The earned income tax credit is a refundable credit for low to moderate income working individuals and couples with children. Gov Guam now pays out about $60 million a year in EITC refunds with no federal reimbursement and has complained for years about what it calls an unfunded mandate. Territories must provide the Treasury with an annual report on the estimate of costs and a statement of costs with respect to the preceding year of the reimbursement. This is permanent and will be applied for tax year 2021 and all subsequent tax years. So this isn't just a COVID-19 relief um, one-time shot. This is a permanent uh, reimbursement of the earned income tax credit um, that is incurred by the, by the territory of Guam. But there's an even larger potential windfall on the way. So Nicholas says the child tax credit of $3,000 for kids over six and $3,600 for those under six will be fully refundable by 2021. That amount will be actually paid out to the taxpayer this year. I have been in communication with um, the Director of Revenue and Taxation, uh, informing her of this uh, additional language that, that just recently passed. I'm hoping that she can um, assist us in uh, working towards quantifying that, uh, but uh, it, could, it could be as substantial, if not more substantial, uh, than the earned income tax credit reimbursements. DRT will be charged with dispersing the funds from the U.S. Treasury, which could start as early as July. An example of what to expect? You're a family with three children. You have one child that's over the age of six and two children under the age of six. You're going to be getting a refunded credit of $9,600 and it will be paid to you this year. Based on the, the language, it could be paid to you on a monthly basis or it could be paid to you on a one-time basis. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Congressman Sir Nicholas says he expects the relief package to clear the Senate. Governor Lulian Guerrero, in the meantime, has already been meeting to prioritize the anticipated $661 million in federal assistance that could be heading our way. Our priority is uh, lost revenues replacement. That's one of the things that we have as uh, all the 50 uh, governors of the states and territories have been uh, working very closely with the Biden administration to allow the governors the discretion of these uh, dollars and it's to uh, help uh, bring back the economy, rebuild our island and so yeah we are going we are looking at grants to the business community. The governor is looking at all options, she says, to bring back jobs and put people to work, as well as other programs to improve the quality of life for the people of Guam. A busy week ahead for public health and the Guam National Guard as they're stepping up vaccination clinics throughout the island. Here's a look at how you can join the thousands of island residents who are part of the vaccination. Public Health is hosting village vaccination clinics this week for eligible residents. Today, the team from Public Health was in Inarahan, but on Tuesday, they will be at the Mingilao Senior Center. On Friday, they will make their way south to the Agate Gym to vaccinate southern residents. The clinics are from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be 100 doses offered at each site. Although walk-ins are accepted, eligible village residents are encouraged to register with their respective mayor's office. COVID-19 vaccination clinics also continue at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse on Tuesday, February 16th through Saturday, February 20th from 1 o'clock in the afternoon to 7 p.m. The UOG vaccination clinics will prioritize those due for their second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. You can register online by scanning the QR codes. Those due for their second dose of the vaccine may get their second dose up to four days early. Due to limited supply, Pfizer, 
First doses will be limited to 60 per hour for eligible individuals. No first doses of the Moderna vaccine will be administered. Walk-ins wishing to avoid long wait times are discouraged from arriving at the 1 p.m. hour. Average wait times during this hour are generally two to three times longer than those later in the afternoon or early evening. One month from today will mark exactly one year. Guam confirmed its first three coronavirus cases. Every single day since then, hundreds of frontliners have been battling to contain COVID. From manning community test sites to the vaccination clinics, they've set aside their personal lives to help strangers. Here's one of those heroes. You've heard the saying that heroes don't always wear capes, but they do wear masks. I think it's really the commitment of the commitment I feel towards the community. When she's not wearing her hat as the University of Guam's Dean of Nursing, Dr. Margaret Hattori Uchima is wearing her invisible cape as a volunteer at the Guam National Guard's vaccination clinic in Mingila. We all have that same drive. Uh, we all feel that this is the only thing that's going to save the island and save our people. Uh, and so I feel that that is something I really want to contribute to. Uh, and because I can contribute to that, I think that that's really important. During her lunch hour and really any free time she has, she walks over to the vaccination clinic to help Guam residents join the vaccination. And it's not just here where she's volunteered, like her students and so many other healthcare professionals on island. In their spare time, they sign up to help whenever and wherever they can. So we all have this common mission, but we are tired. Uh, of course, you know, even trying to take days off, it's difficult because something always comes up, right? Um, and so I'm not, you know, I won't lie about that. It is tiring. Mentally, it's exhausting. But when you're around a bunch of people with the same mission, the same goal, and, and you see how hard they're working. I mean, you can tell just being around here, right? These guys have a high energy level. It's a mission that requires patience and perseverance, and oftentimes setting aside what may be happening in their personal lives. We often don't like to talk about it because, you know, we all have to have our, we have to have our guard up. We have our moments of weakness uh, and we go to each other for strength. The vaccination clinics at UOG is an operation of the National Guard, but countless nurses, both the public and private sector, like Dr. Hattori Chima, are volunteering because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. It's that passion, I think, to try to help you know, save, sorry, I don't mean to be dramatic, right? But to save people from, uh, you know, the, the horrible consequences of COVID, whether it's, you know, even if you're not hospitalized, there, there may be long-term consequences, right? And of course, the worst, worst is leading to um, hospitalization and possibly death. And so we want to spare any family from that going through that. Stay tuned, more news after the break. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain, we will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. 
A small to medium sprite, kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now, kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's, kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets, breaded in tempura and made with cayenne, are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. A 34-year-old man has been arrested in connection to last week's auto-pedestrian incident in Dededo that sent five people to the hospital to include village mayor Melissa Savaris. Samuel Jr. Duaneus Griffin was allegedly drunk at the time and started experiencing chest pains and passed out. The mayor, along with four other GovGuam employees, was in the area conducting a tree inspection near Beneventi Middle School when a car ran off the roadway and struck them. Court documents state that Griffin told police he had been drinking beer since 9 o'clock that morning and the night before tried meth for the first time. That afternoon, he was on his way to get food when he started feeling chest pains, passed out and woke up at the hospital. He told police that, quote, I'll man up to my mistakes and try to make it right. God, I'm so sorry they got hurt. He was charged with vehicular negligence, driving while impaired, and possession of open container in a motor vehicle. It's a first ever for Guam and a goal the governor has had since she was a senator to establish a local paramedic program. At least 33 firefighters with the Guam Fire Department are part of the first cohort taking courses to become a paramedic. The online program is a partnership with the Guam Community College, the Fire Department, and the Guam Department of Labor. GCC President Dr. Mary Okada says this is just the beginning. I will say that the arrangement that we have goes beyond just providing the first cohort for paramedics. It also helps to support the Guam Community College in setting up its own paramedic program so that long term that we can start to uh, you know, develop our own program, get accredited so that we can carry that going forward. Currently, the group is halfway through their 47-week course, comprised of online instruction and clinicals. They're learning the life-saving skills such as administering an IV, intubation, and advanced airway management. Vicki LeMay is on island and is the director of clinic services for the School of EMS. It's all about the people of Guam, the patients that are ill or injured, having a better outcome, a better chance at, at recovering, fully recovering from whatever issue they're having. You know, if it's a, anytime you have a breathing issue, an oxygenation issue, you have minutes. And if the paramedics are there on scene to resolve that there, then they have, you know, a longer period of time um, to get to the doctor and then take it a step further. The initiative was made possible through $400,000 in funding from the Manpower Development Fund under the Guam Department of Labor. Here's DOL Director David De La Sola. And this just goes to show that uh, the H-2 program that we administer and we collect the registration fees go directly to helping our people. According to Guam Governor Lulian Guerrero, it's her vision to have all medics to go through the course to become a nationally certified paramedic. This um, is a great um, significant movement towards progress in advanced care out there in the field. And it, paramedics, as you saw, do more than just vital signs. They intubate, they uh, decompress, as you saw, <coughs> they stabilize uh, fractures, they uh, do IVs, they administer medications. So to me, it's like bringing the emergency room out into the field. Thanks, Jason. It's just a matter of time before we see discussions ramp up about building a new hospital. The governor confirming she is eyeing the property where Eagles Field is located in Mingilao as the site for the facility. Governor Lulian Gro saying she has received feedback from the Department of the Navy about the property and is currently in discussion to either lease the land or for the military to deed it over to the local government. According to an assessment conducted last April by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, it would cost about $761 million to make repairs 
to GMH, whereas it would cost roughly $743 million to build a new one. The Army Corps of Engineers reported that the current infrastructure at GMH is in an overall state of failure. A busy past few days for the Guam Fire Department and Guam EPA. This morning, units from GFD responded to a fire near an apartment complex in the Upper Tumon area. Firefighters were on scene putting out an illegal dump fire. The trash included piles of white goods and old furniture. Investigators from Guam EPA were called to launch an investigation. KUAM has learned Guam EPA was also called to look into a dump fire in Afami Sinahanya earlier today, as well as another fire in Ordot on Sunday. A U.S. Marine lifelong public servant and devoted family man, Colonel Adolfo Scambalori, died this morning. He leaves behind a legacy of service to the community. He helped grow and defend as a decorated combat veteran and civic leader. He was one of the first Chamorros to reach the rank of Colonel in the U.S. Marines and also was a Vice President at the Guam Community College, additionally serving his community as Chief of Police for Guam Police and Federal Security Director for the Transportation Security Administration. He was also a successful entrepreneur, creating and running his own investigations business. KUAM sends our heartfelt prayers and sympathies to his wife Rosie, his children, and grandchildren. We're back with more after the break. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers, and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. So long, nacho fries. Whenever Taco Bell takes them off the menu, he can't escape the cravings. Nacho fries. Escape your cravings with our nacho fries box. Run to Taco Bell. Welcome back. With his second impeachment acquittal behind him, former President Donald Trump remains eligible to run for the White House again in 2024. On Sunday, lawmakers are reflecting on the Senate trial's outcome and looking ahead to their next challenge, COVID relief. Skylar Henry reports. The day after President Trump was acquitted, House impeachment manager Jamie Raskin says Democrats faced an uphill battle trying to convince Senate Republicans. You know, there's no yeah. reasoning with people who basically are you know, acting like members of a religious cult and when they leave office should be selling flowers at Dulles Airport. The 57 to 43 vote fell short of the two-thirds majority needed to convict the former president. The seven Republicans who joined Democrats to vote guilty are now facing backlash. Saturday night, the Louisiana Republican Party Executive Committee voted to censure Senator Bill Cassidy. He's defending his decision. I'm attempting to hold President Trump accountable. And that is the trust I have from the people that elected me. And I am very confident that as time passes, people will move to that position. Alaska Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski issued a statement saying, quote, 
If months of lies organizing a rally of supporters in an effort to thwart the work of Congress, encouraging a crowd to march on the Capitol and then taking no meaningful action to stop the violence once it began, is not worthy of impeachment, conviction, and disqualification from holding office in the United States, I cannot imagine what is. With the trial over, Congress plans to tackle COVID relief when it returns from recess. Without a deal, millions of struggling Americans are set to soon lose emergency unemployment benefits next month. House Democrats are working to push through President Biden's nearly $2 trillion plan, while some Republican lawmakers are calling for the price tag to be cut by about two-thirds. Skyler Henry reporting for KUAM News. President Biden has said he's willing to compromise on who gets $1,400 stimulus checks based on income and may have to separately pursue a $15 minimum wage in stages. Stay tuned, more news after the break. Hi, I'm Mike. Jack hired me to tell you about his bagel breakfast sandwiches with bacon or sausage. Jack, I thought you hired me to be the spokesperson. Why choose one when you can have two? My two for $5 bagel breakfast sandwiches. We get it. Living to the fullest is tough during COVID-19. You don't need to do it alone, and everyone needs a hand right now. We are here. Feeling overwhelmed? Call 647-8833 and let's talk. Mangaliham is a project of Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. Guam is truly a majestic place with its sheer natural beauty, wealth of beaches, and culturally rich landscape. Unfortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant, the African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. Well-intentioned friend. You can count on him to go get food. Guess not so much. At least he's also a I brought a taco and burrito cravings pack friend. Only a Taco Bell. Welcome back. Here is your latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. It's President's Day, so happy birthday on Monday, February 15th to Alejo Conception Sablon. Happy birthday to you and your family. Each and every one of them says we love you. You can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering on our website. That's going to do it for me here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Good night. Beyond Our Borders is brought to you by the